Oxymon is saying NATO world order did not want Russia to be part of NATO despite expression of Russia, Russians, Russians, I think you mean, to join, which is expressed to US, UK, and NATO leadership earlier. Why so, so cold? I think such you mean, such cold shoulders. Doesn't this make NATO inherently anti Russia organization? Like, in like, say India has had few unofficial invites to join NATO. Okay. Um, we, we were kind of yeah. talking about okay. this uh, before, yeah. and I think this was kind of part of the, the series of questions that Oxymoron had. Um, I would say at least in part, it's worth remembering why NATO was invented, right? It's like mm. the original point of the, the treaty agreement was about the USSR. Um, so like, you know, it kind of makes sense, especially then that NATO wasn't particularly welcoming to, to the Soviet Union, um, as that broke up and it became the Russian Federation and, and various states, uh, you know, Georgia and so forth, like as it is right now, I think really what the argument was from the member states of NATO was that while the government may have changed the particular procedures and practices that we are against, you continue to do. And so if we're just trying to steel man the argument as best we can, then the argument from the NATO, the, the NATO allies is, is simply that, that the Russian Federation may have changed its name, it may have changed its geography, it may have changed its government in, in various forms, but it hasn't actually done the things that is necessary for it to be part of the organization. This is really similar to what the EU says to countries regularly, where they say, hey, look, we have a set of five criteria that have to be met. There's no going back on that. You either have all these boxes checked or you don't get in. And then a country says, well, we check these three boxes. Can't you let us in? And the EU responds with, no, you have to finish out the other two criteria. You, you have to have all of these things in order. So, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that NATO is inherently an anti-russian organization i would say they probably it, it might be fair to call them uh, uh, an anti-soviet organization but the soviet union doesn't exist anymore so that's not really you know that doesn't matter but yeah i mean what are, what are your thoughts on it man no i mean i mean i would be in favor of russia like earlier russia joining nato if, if it was possible right um However, it's not that easy. Like if it was, if there wasn't a way to make it possible, I think that would have resolved a whole bunch of things. Yeah, but yeah. you cannot drop your standards to let people in because that would, in like, in that would destroy the thing from within, right? You, if if you just open the door willy nilly to everybody, yeah. then because of the countries joining in not having certain standards or values. The entire you can see how, for example, NATO's um, values are constantly challenged because of Turkey's Turkey's involvement. Turkey being yeah. part of this, you know, <laughs> yeah. the fact that they could just like you know veto a whole bunch of things, like uh -huh. something NATO is already the entire value system of NATO is already being challenged because of Turkey's part. Of, I mean, you still need Turkey. Like, I'm glad Turkey is there because they yes. are really needed. But the fact that their value is different is basically a whole mess for the entire mm -hmm. institution, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, you have to see the the purpose of these barriers. But it was guys like somebody is spamming. Can you please? Okay, I'll just block. It. Yeah, I don't, I don't just yeah. just for all the bots out there now and in the future. I don't need help with that stuff. Believe me, I know exactly where to go. Uh, <laughs> no, just but yeah, I right. I mean I I agree with you when you start when you start just devaluing the original, you know, intent, kind of the whole purpose of the organization by lowering your standards. I mean, what are you doing? Are you really, is, is, is the world a better place because of that? You know, you, you just, yeah. you made yourself essentially worthless by, by yeah. just devaluing yourself. I mean, you could I, argue. You know. So here's the thing, like if you look at the Marshall plan, right after world war II, mm. the Western powers were, became heavily involved in making these countries that, that were defeated, lift them back up and then make them their best allies. And that really worked, right? So 
um, you could argue like, well, why didn't they do that with the Soviet Union, right? So I don't know, Germany was defeated after World War II. United States was like, you know what? L let's just go back in and make a heavy investment in making these countries, you know, instead of like punishing them. Because like after World War I, like Germany was punished, okay? Mm. And humiliated, yeah. right? And you're like, well, that didn't work out because like when we have World War II, right? So like, maybe let's try something else. Maybe like mm -hmm. after we defeat our enemy, instead of, of punishing them and humiliating, maybe then, you know, hold, take their hand and lift them up. Right. And we're like, okay, that worked out. Look, Germany mm -hmm. is now our, our ally and, uh, you know, a, a great power, to, uh, you know, upholding democracy and liberty around the world. So great. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what we should do, right? However, the reason why you could do that with Germany and Japan after World War II is because they were they they were crushed right yeah, really so they were like there were such a vacuum for you to just go in and like okay let's see what we could fill fix here right and technically maybe you couldn't do that after world war one because the level of crushing that happened at world war ii was not really there like you couldn't just put like hey we're here to fix everything like who the hell like what the hell go get out of here like they, yeah. there was still something standing for them to resist you right um and maybe the reason why you couldn't do that with the Soviet Union is because it wasn't, I mean, it was a Cold War. It wasn't like a World War II that ended up making the Soviet Union right. defeated. So there wasn't, they weren't crushed to the point where you could come in and they're like, okay, we're coming up and fixing things here mm -hmm. right now, right? So maybe, mm -hmm. so maybe the end of the Cold War is more similar to the end of World War One, where it wasn't a complete, you know, crushing of, you know, Russia or the Soviet Union for you to come and do a Marshall Plan two, you know, 2.0, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe Putin is going to give us that now, right? Maybe Putin is now at the point where maybe get put, you know, taking us to a direction where you are going to get the utter destruction of Russia. It seems like, mm -hmm. I mean, he's now, he's so committed to this war right now that he seems to be you know very very uh, supposedly going to mobilize a, another 300,000 some odd troops or something i i don't know how that is possible honest i'm no military expert but i i listen to a wide range of different things and most of the people that i have heard talking about this have said that number is just absurd yeah. that is an absurd absurd thing but also i mean you have to take into account the the fact that for a while, various various governments in Russia were explicitly trying to be more isolationist. So it, it's hard to invite somebody into a global community where everybody communicates openly with each other, or at least in theory is communicating openly with each other and working together transparently. It's hard to do that with, with uh, a country that is actively saying, we want to take everything off your grid. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that, that the country has done over the last few decades has been attempting to make sure that they aren't reliant on Western countries for, for their goods and services. So when you have a country that's actively saying, we don't want to play with you, we're going to take our toys and we're going to go home, it, it's, it's kind of confusing to then have them offer to join with yeah. the neighborhood block party it's like wait a second yeah. why would you why would we let you in you never play well so so maybe maybe in the long run putin is doing the world a favor by making this whole force against liberal yeah. values yeah. completely destroy itself from within and then maybe after so maybe the end of cold war was kind of like what happened after the, the end of world war one and this complete destruction of russia okay uh, would be what we had similar to after World War II. And maybe from the ashes, we could have, maybe after that, we could have a, another mar a Marshall Plan because now it, it, the barriers are removed to the point where the Western liberal world powers could walk, walk in without no resistance. So like, look, you screwed us up so badly. There is no way you could deny or um, reject our help. Right? I don't know gonna... if that is an optimistic or or severely pessimistic view. I don't know <laughs> which which side of the scale. It's, that it's both. It's both. <laughs> right. Like just like burn this whole thing to the ground and let's start building back up oh. Russia from the start. Because you know it, you know when you have like mold in the wall, 
Mm-hmm. Sometimes you know, just need to I, turn the whole thing down. Right? I get what you're saying. I get right. what you're saying. <laughs> but if I if I could just real quick, just the analogy you're making is ripping out right. like like insulation in a wall versus like mm-hmm. essentially an entire country's economy and, and yes, like yes. Just go, so, <laughs> but no, no, again, I think I I do. I I think there is. I think with this we have we we're in a similar place as we are in Iran where it it's very upsetting how we have to get to this it seems but we are at a place where i am hopeful i i do think that there are some there are some off ramps there are some ways that um you know the russian people and the iranian people can get out from under these oppressive regimes and and actually you know become really valuable members of of the global community and and stop being shunned by everybody. The the big problem I for me I think is that it seems to be the case that the way that we're going to get those positive results is is by a lot of bloodshed and a lot of crap in between. And I'm not a big fan of that. I don't like that for sure. Um but yeah, I I I think I think there's a lot of things that, you know, and rightfully so. There's a lot of things that that the United States has done. The United States government isn't perfect. Like we've it's I understand why other countries' governments are like, man, the US kind of sucks. It's like, yeah, we've done some bad things. And so has so has the Russian government. So you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.